again, thanks so much everybody for joining us today for our uh, uh, digital organizing series. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, we are recording this webinar, so we will share it with anybody who, uh, you know, missed the beginning or, you know, wants to just uh, recap it. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and get started. So again, we're going over digital organizing and uh, it is a two-part series. So today we'll be talking about creating a digital content. And then towards the end of this slide, we'll talk about series number two. So going over the agenda, um, we'll do some introductions of ourselves uh, to introduce you to the digital team. Uh, also understanding the role of digital organizing. We'll go over some do's and don'ts of social media. And lastly, how you can create your uh, own digital story. So uh, I'll start off the introductions. Uh, many of you might already know me. Uh, my name is JL. I'm the operations manager at the uh, HDDP. Um, so, you know, along with uh, helping out with the day-to-day uh, -day operations, our summer leadership academy and fellowship program, I also help out with uh, our um, Instagram content, uh, helping, you know, compose a blur report and emails. Um, so that's the kind of aspect I have with uh, digital. Um, and then uh, next, we also have Ben. Hey, thanks, JL. So my name is Benjamin Hernandez. Um, I run uh, Human Age Digital. It's a digital advertising firm out of here, out of, uh, out of Houston. And uh, we're currently a vendor for the county and we're just um, sort of helping to lay out in this presentation the, uh, the uh, best way to message, uh, especially in these times. Thanks, so I'll pass it on to our colleague here, Ariel. Hi, my name is Ariel. I'm the Southwest Field Organizer and Asian American Pacific Islander Field Organizer for the party. So I work primarily in the Southwest side, so like in the Galton, A-Leaf, some parts of the Medical Center and the Energy Corridor. Um, and I've just been helping out with digital and helping with graphics and filling in holes whenever is needed. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys, for those intros. Um, so before we start talking about, you know, um, digital, uh, digital organizing, let's give some background. So as of, you know, 2019, 77% of Americans go online on a daily basis. Now with the, the social distancing and the you know, stay home order, that has drastically changed. Uh, we're basically online you know, every hour of every day, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, um, YouTube, you know, whatever it may be, we're, you know, that is our form of uh, information um, during these times. So you know, we can definitely take advantage of that opportunity uh, by really getting our personal stories out there um, and, and really reaching our base and, and people who, you know, who we've yet to reach. So I'm going to pass it over to Ariel now. Sorry, I didn't <laughs> unmute myself. So we're going to go with the role over digital organizing. Oh, next slide, please. So why digital? So we use digital to tell our stories to supporters, allies, and the media, and it helps build our movement. So just an example of some of the people where we want to reach out to. So it includes our supporters, so people like you, our precinct chairs, our club leaders, um, people who are already involved with the party, as well as like some of our donors. We have people who are our allies, so people whose work aligns with ours, but they're not necessarily part of the party, so like nonprofits. Um, activists, etc. And of course, the media, which includes uh, news outlets, bloggers, etc. So the ultimate goal of digital is to move people up the ladder of engagement. For example, um, someone can start out liking a post of ours, like we're talking about one of our food drives, like, oh, they're going to like the post about the food drive. Then we want them to move on to donating to the food drive, like, oh, I'm going to give 10 bucks to the food drive. Then they stay on our page and they like what we're doing. So they're going to like volunteer in one of our phone banks and stay involved that way. And then ultimately we want them to organize their own phone banks or their own events and their own communities. So this is just an example of like the traditional ladder of engagement. This is of course uh, pre self quarantine isolation times. Um, we want people to start from the bottom. So um, engaging online to going to the top. So again, starting out from like, I wanna share this Facebook post to I'm gonna organize my own, um, my own house party and I'm gonna share it on Facebook. However, as you know, like as JL already touched on it, um, 
now all the ladder of engagement is uh, online. So we're like, we're lacking posts online and we're um, organizing online. So I just want to ask a question to everybody. Um, so now that we can't do offline activities, um, who's been able to virtually attend an event, volunteer, organize? And I'm going to start a poll. And you can vote on the poll. We're going to give like a minute or so. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it's 100% yes. And I mean, like, <laughs> if you're in this um, training right now, you're part of a virtual event. So it kind of answered the question itself. But the point is, like, um, since, like, the start of the month, I have never been on so many Zoom calls, so many virtual trainings before in my life. And that's just the nature of what's going on in this, um, this time. So we want to take advantage of that for sure. Sorry, I want to jump in real quick. If you happen to have a question, uh, feel free to drop that question into the Q&A section at the bottom. Um, so, um, I, Carl, I see you raising your hand. Um, if you do happen to have a question, just go ahead and throw it down there in that little chat, um, and then we will, uh, we will get to you, if that's okay. And just to reiterate, the ultimate goal of digital organizing um, is to push engagement to direct action. Um, again, yeah, now we can't go outside and go knock on doors, but we can um, donate to the party. We can um, do phone banking to reach out to voters. There's so many things you can do um, online. Great, thank you so much, Ariel. Uh, now we're gonna pass it over to Ben. Thank you, JL. So um, I wanna take a moment and pause here um, and get a sense for the room before we move to this next section. So we have a couple of questions we're gonna ask. Uh, so the first one is, um, is this one is, how comfortable are you with digital and whatever digital means to you? Um, so go ahead and take a, a little bit to answer that. And that'll help us sort of as we go forward to know a little bit. So good, so we're seeing we have about, um, and I'll share the, the results in a minute here, but it looks like, let me go ahead and just share them now. Um, so it looks like the, the vast majority of people are in that somewhat comfortable range and the uh, very comfortable range. So good, you know, we've been doing this now for a month and uh, you, we've gotten more comfortable with technology. Um, and so that's sort of what we expect. But now specifically on some of the platforms, I'm gonna ask another question, how uh, this is about the platforms that we use. So what platforms, what digital platforms do you use regularly? And you can choose uh, any one of these. We have email, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, Facebook, fax machine, or even a carrier pigeon. If you know, you're still doing that, that's okay too. No judgment there. Great, we'll take a few more seconds and it looks like um, the vast majority of the people definitely are on email. Everybody who answered is on email. I'm gonna go ahead and close this out so we can all take a look here. Um, yeah, so basically everybody who's on here says that uh, they use email and Facebook. Uh, next is Twitter, right? 10 of the 12 folks who answered uh, use Twitter on a regular basis and about a third use Instagram and um, you know about 17% here use Snapchat and nobody regularly uses TikTok. This is helpful for us as we sort of move forward because it gives us an idea of where everybody's at here. Uh, so let's go ahead and go to the next screen. Let me go ahead and, um, yep. So when we talk about digital communication, we really wanna talk about a narrative first. We wanna talk about how do we present what we are trying to, to say and so you know, if we can sum this up, it's really that all content should be directly related to the larger story you're trying to tell. Um, so when you think about hosting and using these platforms, you have to think in the, like, how does this fit into the bigger puzzle of what we are trying to do, either as an individual, if you're a candidate or an organization, if you're a club or um, a nonprofit, is how does this fit into the bigger story? Next slide. 
And the way to break it up, and, and don't worry if this you're a little confused by this, we're gonna walk through this step-by-step step and walk you through a post. But basically there's three components to this, which is called the story of self, the story of us, which you see at the top of this triangle, and then the story of now. And each one of these, what these does is, is it really brings the story and the narrative together. And it's sort of a template to think about um, in an easy way to create content, content and narrative, basically the words for a post or for digital content that you're creating. So when we talk about the story itself, really what we're looking at is like, what is your organization or what are you as a candidate doing? How can you bring leadership um, to this area or whatever you are talking about? And then when you move to the story of us, it's thinking about a community, you know, what shared values and experiences do, you, do, do we have as a community and putting that into words. And then the story of now is how do I create urgency? All of these things, it's really great to, to uh, talk about you, know, you or your organization and talk about us as a community, but then what, right? We want to bring people to action. And that's where the story of now, um, bringing some urgency and purpose uh, and action to what you are trying to do, especially on digital platforms. So let's go ahead and go to the next slide. So drafting engaging narrative driven context. So we're gonna take you through basically three steps. We're gonna talk about the words in a post and I'm gonna do that. And then my colleagues here are gonna talk about, you know, links and how to do that and pictures and how to do that. But I'll talk about the first part, next slide. So when looking at creating the text, some quick do's and don'ts. And by the way, we'll have this recorded and I'll, it'll be on our, um, on our website too and on Facebook so you can you know, refer to this. But do use the story of self again to be, build a genuine connection with your audience. Do use the story of us to demonstrate the importance of everybody working together or a community. And use the story of now to create urgency and put out deadlines. Um, we're also adding in there, make hard asks or a call to action. A call to action is great. You shared some content, now what do you want people to do? Don't just leave people hanging. It is lead them to some action um, that you want them to take. And, you know, uh, along with that, it's included link for that engagement. So some don'ts. Uh, don't share pic pictures or links without commentary. Don't just put something out there to put it. I know sometimes we feel we just have to do stuff. No, put it in that context of why you're doing this. Don't be inorganic, right? Like, um, we're all interacting with technology. We want to feel that the people that are sharing content or putting out content are people who are real humans. So, you know, be unique there. Don't just be robotic when you do it. And don't do, use all caps. I know that sometimes, you know, we have that caps lock button on and we just like type all in caps. In the digital world, that's like screaming, right? So don't do that, um, even if you're frustrated. Um, and don't skip the ask. That is, if you're going to use the top, time to put something out there, you know, make sure you have an ask. And if it's appropriate, don't forget the hashtags. So uh, especially on a place like um, Instagram or Twitter, where the hashtags are more important. So after the do's and don'ts, let's go through an exercise here. So let's go to the first slide. So here's an example. So we're going to talk about the story of self. And you see that little graphic on the bottom where it says good, we're going to move all the way through a post to show you the best way to do this. So here example, let me go ahead and read it. Like many of us, I have a pre-existing condition. For me, my congenital kidney condition makes me make, means yearly specialist visits and multiple prescriptions, and none of that is cheap. Fortunately, my health insurance covers a lot of the costs, and it's illegal for them to drop me thanks to the Affordable Care Act. So I think in that post, what I'm doing is a good job of saying, you know, being a human and saying, here's my condition. This is why, um, you know, this is important. Health insurance is important. And I can't get dropped from the Affordable, um, from, from the affordable uh, Care Act. So that's really good, right? That sort of tells a genuine story. Um, so then let's go ahead and then move to what would be a little bit better. So let's go to the next slide. Okay. Um, so this is now using the story of now to build some deadlines and some urgency. So in three days, Congress will vote on whether or not to keep the Affordable Care Act. That means that in three days, they'll vote to either keep me healthy or let me go broke uh, trying to pay for my medicine and health care. So that's a little bit better. R right now, what I'm saying, look, in three days, this is going to happen and it's going to impact me directly. That is a little bit better than where we started. But let's keep moving up that ladder. Let's go to the next slide. So now using those hard asks or including those call to actions. So 
Representatives in Congress have a responsibility to listen to their constituents. Please join me tomorrow afternoon at my house to make calls to our representatives and tell them not to gut the ACA and you can RSVP right here and you give a link. So that's close, right? Now you have a hard ask is like, look, this is important. This is happening tomorrow. Um, but, you know, how do we bring all of these things together? You know, you included the link there for engagement, but let's look at sort of the best way to bring all of this together. So let's look at that next slide. So here it is. I have a pre-existing condition. You're talking about yourself. The Affordable uh, Care Act keeps me healthy and debt-free. In three days, the Senate votes to either keep me healthy or let me go broke paying for meds. Come to my place at 6 p.m. tomorrow and call Cruz and Cornyn to tell them not to get the ACA. Millions of us are counting on you. And here is the link. And I think what this does really great, so like even the slide before when we were looking at it, you know, it said, come to my place tomorrow. This is a very specific ask. Come to my place tomorrow at 6 p.m. We're going to call Cruz and Cornyn. We're going to tell them not to get the ACA. And you're also including sort of the, the, the story about yourself, right? I have my pre-existing condition. Um, the ACA keeps me healthy and debt-free. So this is a way to bring all of these together and you're using your hashtags there too, um, if appropriate. So next slide. So the last thing I'd like to say is that think of this um, as a dialogue and not a monologue. And what I mean by that is that essentially you're starting a conversation with people. You want to have that engagement back and forth, but it also means, um, you know, try to keep your content concise. Let's go to the next slide. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. I, I knew I was missing a caption there. Be brief, right? One of the things is that, you know, you, I know we have a lot to tell and it's really hard to get our stories in, in a form, in our narrative, in a form that's digestible, but you know, it is really important because sometimes people are not going to be able to read through your whole post or, you know, click on that see more button to read everything. So you want to be brief and engaging. And that's why we're giving you this sort of template of the, the story of the self, the story of us and the story of now. So you can use that template as you create the text. So great. That's creating the words behind what you're going to post. Now let's look at the next component of a, of a digital communication for this. I'll pass it back to my colleague. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ben. Uh, yes, so I see, as Ben mentioned, you know, uh, we've, got, we've gotten the narrative. Now you want to try to include some capturing compelling images to get the attention of your viewers. So let's start with some do's and don'ts. Uh, do zoom with your feet. So although it might be a little awkward getting pretty close to like, you know, the group of people or, you know, your subject, um, you know, this is how you're going to get great quality photos. Um, do take a ton of photos. Um, because at the end of the day, you might go back and see that some of them are blurry, you know, the angles are just bad. So give yourself some options. Uh, do get permission from, um, from the people that you are taking photos of. If you have a volunteer who is pretty shy and you happen to put a photo of them up on social media, you are possibly risking, you know, losing a volunteer because, you know, maybe they just don't want their um, photo out there. So, you know, try, try, to practice, um, try to practice getting permission from folks that you don't know as, right, as much. Uh, do keep messaging in mind um, while, you know, including like quirky, fun gifts and images is, you know, uh, spot on and recommended. Uh, try not to do any images that are like, you know, totally like not related to your messaging. Um, you know, do edit photos when it comes to like any, you know, if it's like too dark, try to, uh, you know, put some lighting in there. Um, if you happen to have like something in the background that you need to blur out, you know, do that before posting it do stage a few photos. So um, at the party, we sometimes, you know, when we do phone banks, we get so into phone banking that we forget to take photos. Um, and as our chair says, uh, if it doesn't, if it's not on Facebook, did it really happen? So, you know, towards the end of our phone bank, we realize, oh crap, we didn't take photos. So we do a quick little stage, uh, a staged uh, photo of us phone banking. Um, and we'll, we'll give some uh, best practices for that in the next couple, in the next slide or so. Uh, so now let's cover some don'ts. So don't use the camera zoom. Uh, we talked about this in the do's, right? Try to get as close as possible with your feet uh, and, and by not zooming the actual camera because that'll just affect the quality of your photo. Uh, don't use blurry photos. Um, you know, sometimes it's the only photo you have and you just, you know, just want to post it on, on, on your social media. Uh, but try your best to not post any blurry photos. Um, don't capture any empty chairs. So always try to eliminate empty space around you. So if you have, you know, 10 chairs, but only like six or seven phone bankers, 
get those chairs out of the way um, and, and then you can take your photo. Um, so let's talk about saving some good photos. So designate someone to be the photographer, right? So if you have somebody who's a little shy or just, you know, doesn't want to be photographed, let them, let them be the one who takes the photo for you. Uh, clean up the trash. So, you know, if you just had an awesome phone bank um, or, you know, an awesome virtual gathering and you notice some trash in your background, clean that up. Clean up, you know, any plates you have around there. Um, and then tell everybody their role in the photo. Because, I mean, honestly, it's pretty awkward taking a staged photo. Uh, you're probably in the middle of, like, doing something else and you're like, I don't know what to do. So just tell somebody, like, you know, you get on the phone. You pretend like you're talking to, uh, you know, um, that person over there. Um, and then, you know, be mindful of the background. Again, you know, if you happen to have uh, a campaign sign, a t-shirt, anything with your branding on there, or, or something, you know, like a, me a cool messaging that you have in the background, try to include that in your photo. Um, and again, eliminate all empty space. So if you have some empty chairs, take those out of the way. So let's look at some examples. So, you know, uh, we have, uh, you know, First Lady Michelle Obama. These are some pretty awesome photos here. Really great quality. Um, you know, a lot of people in there. Um, these are, you know, pretty professional. Um, and now let's look at some of uh, uh, the Harris County Democratic Party photos. So here we have one of our uh, former organizers doing a roadshow. So, you know, we have the branding back there. We have the HCDP signs. Uh, we have, you know, the audience. Yes, there's like one empty chair, but it was, you know, kind of hard to get that out of the way. Um, and, and another example, uh, we have our executive director uh, kicking off our campaign school last year. Um, and so, you know, again, we have the branding in that in the back with like um, the HCDP on the television, uh, the HCDP shirt on that mannequin, um, you know, and, and there, there's not as many empty chairs in there. You know, there's not too much empty space. Um, so, you know, try, try to stick with those uh, goals whenever taking your photos. So, Awesome. You got your narrative. You've got your photo. Uh, now you need to include your call to action and your links to make sure that people take that appropriate next step. So um, some things that you would want to uh, take in, uh, include or, or, you know, some options for a uh, call to action are um, asking your viewers or asking your followers to like and share your post. You know, that is the most basic thing you can ask from your followers, um, you know, because the more they like and the more they share, the more you'll be able to expand the number of people that actually view your posts. Um, if you're sharing an article about a policy that affects you locally, you know, add something like comment below if this impacts you or tag a friend who needs to read this. And again, it's a great way to expand uh, the number of people that will actually be able to see your posts. Um, one thing uh, that we've done in the past is uh, a petition for um, in order to expand vote by mail. So uh, this will really help you with uh, again, you know, reaching more people, but also expanding your email list. And uh, we're actually gonna talk about that in series number two, and we'll get more, more details about that towards the end of this presentation. Um, and, you know, lastly, another thing you can do is ask people to sign up. So whether it's a Mobilize America sign up or any other platform that you use, you wanna include those in your posts. And again, we'll talk about those in um, series number two of uh, digital organizing. Um, so when it comes to posting links, the, these different platforms have different ways how you can, uh, that you can post links. Um, so for Twitter, you can leave the URL in the actual tweet uh, and it won't show up. We'll give some examples uh, for this. So let's look at, let's look at Twitter. So um, I have a post here. As soon as I tweet it, the link itself is gone, right? It still includes um, it still includes the link, but it doesn't have like that long URL. Um, and then same thing for Instagram, right? So for Instagram, you aren't able, oops, sorry about that. So for Instagram, you are not able to um, post a link on, um, on your content. But what you can do is post a link on your bio. So whenever you're posting something, always uh, refer to your bio. Uh, so people can view the link and then that'll take them to the appropriate place. Now let's look at Facebook. So for Facebook, uh, if you want to put that link in there, oops, sorry about that. 
Bookstore.org slash 2020. You can include the link on there, um, but then uh, delete the actual URL. Uh, and I did this earlier, so it's already on there, but it will still keep uh, the link that you want to uh, show your viewers and your followers. So um, those are some of the differences with these three platforms whenever sharing your links. And again, we'll share this presentation and uh, the recording uh, so you can go back and view it for any questions uh, that you do have. Uh, when it comes to hashtags, so hashtags can be used to find like-minded people and for, you know, those same like-minded people to find you. Um, so again, on these three different platforms, they do differ. So with uh, Twitter, you know, it's recommended to use anywhere from one to two tweets, uh, sorry, hashtags, and you can use them anywhere in your tweets. Uh, for Instagram, um, Instagram is known for a lot more hashtags than Twitter and Facebook. So you can use anywhere from five to 10 hashtags in there. You can include them in your captions, in your comments, or even in your bios. Um, and then lastly, we have Facebook. So, you know, the recommended amount of hashtags for that is anywhere from one to two. It can be included in your actual Facebook post, in your comments, um, or, you know, and even in like your private group messages. So let's talk a little bit more about tagging. So you might, you know, be receiving a bunch of tags from friends that you have or acquaintances that you have on Facebook. So one thing to keep in mind is, you know, be, be courteous uh, whenever you're tagging people. Um, you know, if it's somebody that you don't know too well or somebody, you know, that you are just not too comfortable tagging, ask permission before tagging those people in, in photos. Um, but some people do have settings so where they have to, you know, accept that permission before it even shows up on their timeline. Uh, so that's a good, a good thing to keep in mind uh, for your own social media. Um, you know, encourage your friends and, uh, and, and people um, that, in your, in, that are in your network to tag you in their posts. So um, whenever you do have a phone bank or have like a Zoom, for, a Zoom phone bank, um, you will be able to share their posts as soon as they uh, put, it up, put it up live. Um, and again, going back to, you know, tagging people that, that, um, that you know, try not to tag like 100 or like, you know, 100 plus people, um, because chances are folks will probably not look at your tag, you know, tag people who are relevant in your context. Uh, here's an example. Um, we have one from the party. So we were able to raise, uh, you know, over 7,000 for Houston Shift Meals. Uh, and we tagged Houston Shift Meals. So uh, folks who view our post are able to, you know, visit Houston Shift Meals uh, page and get more information from them. Another example that we have is from our field director. So this happened after the primary. So, you know, he tagged all of the uh, HCDP staffers and volunteers. Um, and, you know, really uh, thank them for their work that they were able to do uh, during the primary. And so to wrap it up, um, you know, these are the three main components of uh, putting together your digital content is including uh, text, compelling images, and definitely uh, including the links and call to action for your uh, content. So now let's, uh, let's turn it over to you guys. So let's go ahead and create uh, your own digital story. So, you know, draft your own narrative, um, whether it's about you coming today to our uh, digital organizing session, or, you know, how you first got involved in politics, or just about how, um, you know, COVID-19 is impacting you right now in your community. Uh, draft a narrative about that. And then take a compelling photo, and, you know, make a call to action whether it's a, it's a link to uh, readyharris.org so people can get resources on, you know, on, on their current needs or a link to our phone banks where we're reaching out and talking to people who are eligible to vote by mail. Um, or if it's our 2020 Ramadan celebration where we're, uh, you know, having a virtual discussion and uh, feeding our community um, in two different mosques, you know, um, take this time and, you know, create your own digital story. But also don't forget to like tag and hashtag uh, we've provided some of the uh, some of the tags for the local party. So if you are on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, you are more than welcome to tag us, um, and you know we can probably reshare your reshare your content. Um, and before we end, we do want to talk about next week. Uh, sorry, we do want to talk about the next session. Uh, for the next session, we will be uh, setting up virtual. We'll 
talk, we'll talk about setting up virtual meetings. We'll talk about emails and best practices. And we'll talk about how you can text um, and you know, give you some best practices about that too when it comes to uh, texting with your campaign or organization. All right, so um, if anybody happens to have any questions, feel free to drop those questions down in the uh, Q&A section below. Okay, um, I see a question from Eric. Are there any official hashtags that HCDP uh, is using? So um, currently we do use like a team HCDP, um, but I mean, Benjamin, uh, would you recommend any other um, official hashtags from us? No, that's the only one that's currently being used right now. Um, so no, that, that's a good one to use right now that officially like the, the county party is using. Oh, and also uh, progress starts here is also one of our one of our uh, biggest hash bigger hashtags as well. Um, Charlene, uh, yes, we will also be sending uh, a copy of the slide deck to everybody. We'll send a follow up email with the recording and also uh, you know the, the slides so you'll be able to share with your friends and view it at a later date. And then same thing with uh, um, Eleanor. Uh, we'll definitely be sharing that PowerPoint uh, to you guys so you'll be able to share with others. Hey, uh, so Eric, uh, yes, we will be sharing um, next week's uh, next week's training session. It'll be next Thursday at 1 p.m. Uh, we will definitely be sharing the recording and the slide deck that we use for next week's uh, next week's uh, session as well. Carla, I'm really happy that the uh, hashtag slide was helpful. Uh, and like I said, you know, we'll share the slides and, and we're and more than happy to, you know, do a one-on-one -on -one with you to try to get, um, you know, any questions that you do have, um, you know, whether it's like on Zoom, we, we can help you out um, virtually that way uh, or anywhere, any, any way that you're comfortable with uh, working with us. And, you know, we'd be happy to help you um, get acquainted with hashtags a little bit more. Um, but in regards to uh, when to apply them, um, you know, you can use them. So like we use uh, the hashtag that we use regularly for our Instagram posts are uh, vote by mail, especially when we're talking about like our leaderboards or the, uh, the great work that our volunteers are doing. You know, we always include a vote by mail um, on Instagram um, and, and on Facebook as well. And of course our official hashtags, like it all starts here and team HCDP. Um, I have a, there's a question here from Cheryl. How do you come up with an appropriate hashtag? Um, ben, do you mind answering this one? Yeah, I think it like, I, I think with hashtags, I think that, you know, you should take a moment for, think about it. Uh, and here's what I mean by that. A lot of people, so we talked about hashtags are important, right? And I think they're part of the communication space and connecting with like-minded people. It is always easier to jump into a conversation with hashtags that already exist. And I think a great example of this is a question that Eric asked. You know, Eric said, hey, are, what are the official ones that Harris County Democratic Party is using? Why? Because he could go and create his own hashtags, right? But he's asking, what is that conversation sphere already happening around hashtags? And then let me jump into that. So that's, that's sort of the first piece of advice that I give is to you know, find what hashtags are already working on Twitter. This is easy because you get some trending things. Um, but if you're an active user on Instagram, you also know by the content you're engaging with what hashtags there are. If you are going to use a hashtag for your organization, make sure it's sort of it's a long-term use of that hashtag. And here's what I mean. Um, 
there's not a lot of sense in just creating a hashtag for an event or something that's going to happen like in a couple of days, unless you have a very, very large following, right? Um, because then you can get traction around that, that hashtag. So I think if the, the best piece of advice that I give is like start using hashtags that are already out there because then people are already engaging with that content. If you get to the point where you have a very large following or a large community, um, then you can create your own hashtags and then sort of be consistent with those. So that's an example of that is the uh, Team HCDP or the Progress Starts Here uh, because those are hashtags that we're already using with our community. Um, so yeah, I hope that answered the question. Awesome, thanks Ben. Um, alrighty, so uh, if nobody has any more questions, uh, thank you again everybody for everybody you know for joining us today. 